Well, I'm so nervous, I need my cards, because I've got this audience, and I'm using Prezi for the first time, so who says vice chancellors can't learn? And I do think this is a strictly type of competition, three vice chancellors, I'm expecting votes at the end <laughs> as to how we've done. So, um, I, what I want to do is, in the 10 minutes or so, is to talk a little bit about my experiences. But I particularly want to do it from 30 odd years experience of leading in lots of different organisations, different sectors, uh, in roles that have direct and indirect and influencing um, attributes to them. Um, and it's in the context of USW, so I'm going to talk about my experience as USW's Vice-Chancellor. Um, and I just want to say up front that three years ago we created what is now USW, and I thought we could create one large happy family and everything would flow from that. We'd have great performance and great results and we'd weather all the storms as we calmly do as vice-chancellors. Of course, the reality has been a little bit more mixed than that and it certainly tested my resilience and the resilience of my team and that's what I'd like to give you some examples of. I've got two very short videos and three key learning points I'd like to get out of this. So, my first video. I thought it's better that I actually make the difference to bring positive change in the society and in human life. In recent years, drug-resistant bacteria and antibiotic crisis have become a worrying issue, while scientists are accessing many avenues to solve this issue. My research takes a different approach. I'm developing a novel method to predict risk of a bacterial strain becoming toxic. This project involves data mining and biostatistical modeling using high-performance computing. Fujitsu is funding my research. They see my research creating... Now, why have I shown you that video? It's the video of Fasana, who's one of our PhD students from Bangladesh. And why I wanted to show that was about being real. And Colin's already mentioned authenticity. So putting authenticity at the core of the organisation. So Colin's talked about how you are that as a leader, but actually how do you get that core across all the organisation? We are huge, diverse, dynamic organisations. And that sense of purpose, which is driven by values, and Vasana talks for another two minutes about why she is doing the research that she's doing, but actually leaders need to model those values in everything that they do. And one of my recent lessons on this, we've embarked on a quite considerable programme to look at how we can move the culture of the university, which includes from bottom to top, looking at how we perform as individuals. And I like to think I'm a great leader and that I'm very personable, I'm very authentic. But what came back from my team uh, across the university was that you've become too marketised. A lot of what you say is now written by other people, uh, they know that. Um, and actually I've lost that touch of, of spontaneity and being engaged with people and it being my voice coming through. Um, and that's quite sobering for me because, you know, I, I pride myself on that. So that's one thing we've got to look at doing more. The second on the same theme is about um, being honest with people. So I've talked about being real and having a core purpose and authenticity, but being honest with people about where you are. And the lesson here is, is about telling people about our financial performance. So um, every year we do a, what's called a state of the nation. I'm sure many of you do it, where you stand up in front of your troops and you're counted. They are fairly formal occasions. And in the last few years, we've got the whole management team involved in, in doing these sessions. So we thought one of the things we would talk about is our financial performance. Honestly, the management team were worried about it because they thought our performance wasn't good enough to tell the whole staff team about where we were. But we did, and we honestly presented our performance and our relative performance in terms of financial position. We were overwhelmed by the response to that. What came back was, oh my God, we thought the university was in trouble. We thought we were financially in difficulty. Of course, we're not. We're a very well-run institution. So instead of the staff being, as we thought, bored by the financial information. Actually, they've been empowered by it. They've grown in strength and they understand where we are and why some of the things that we ask them to do and their teams then enact are necessary to continue to be financially well run. My second video. <laughs> Happy 
So why have I shown you the video of Emma Gwynis and her team doing a birthday party for a new student? Well, the other third element of, of the programme of work that we're taking forward and why I believe it's so important in terms of getting people to want to work in an organisation is about creating a strong sense of identity uh, and a sense of culture and of family. Um, and this, actually, it's uh, 1 minute 07, it's on YouTube. Um, she was letting staff and students be themselves. She was showing them one of our cultures, which was around birthday cakes and balloons and welcoming people. Uh, the bit I didn't get to, because I thought it was just too much PR, he puts on a USW hoodie, which is actually the present. Um, but the point I'm making here is, is that we can't be a family if we don't recognise each other and recognise each other's differences and value those differences. Um, and, and we do a huge amount of engagement, communication, consultation. We do inductions of staff. And we certainly have some partial success, I would say, in making people feel they're welcome and part of the family and their voice is heard. But that informal, almost spontaneous, some spontaneous uh, activity, I think we probably need to do more of. And our current programme, which as I've referred to, is taking staff from bottom to top, including 400 staff now engaged in an exercise which is externally supported to build a culture that actually enables people to feel their voices are being heard and they're being listened to and actually they are empowered to be able to do things. Uh, one of my lovely stories which my colleagues in the room will have already heard before is about our gardeners. Uh, they epitomise so much about what we're trying to inspire to do. When USW was formed there was some heartache around its formation. For some people it was not a bright future because they knew they weren't going to necessarily stay with the organisation going forward. And we have two sets of gardeners, one at our Newport campus and one at our Tree Forest campus. And the guys at Newport who knew um, when we decided to close the campus that they would not have a job, took such pride in making sure that the grounds were fantastic for a degree ceremony. And when I went up to them and said, I really appreciate you doing this, they were doing it for the students. So we're back to that analogy of the person sweeping the floors in NASA and saying, yeah, I'm here to put a man on the moon. And they have absolutely got what the family was about and what the shared cultures were. My final point, which is really one I think for us as leaders and for Leadership Foundation, is in reflecting on this, you know, we do shared load of management development programmes. We do lots of work in trying to understand how we get things working in organisations. We are undoubtedly working, as Cara's going to refer to, in a climate of great deal of uncertainty and, and competition with pressure on performance and the growing use of metrics. But have we, in trying to develop our management and leadership, generated a culture where conformity is the norm, where actually we send people out so they behave and act in similar ways, almost group think of leadership? And I think we have to reflect on that very strongly because at the moment I can't see that we're really breaking through to show that difference and to enable that difference to contribute to the team. Thank you very much. <laughs>